Good morning. We're kicking off a brand new series this morning called Moods. And before you try to guess what it is about, then uh, I have a question for you, okay? So what is your favorite song? Put it in the comments below. I know that's kind of a tough question, especially if you're anything like me, because my favorite song changes all the time. Uh, but when I'm feeling happy or, or and I'm in a good mood, I like to listen to like an acoustic chill playlist or um, just something upbeat. And when I'm trying to pump myself up for a big game or get excited about something challenging or maybe just doing yard work, then I like to listen to some hard rock or uh, anthemic music like Imagine Dragons or 21 Pilots or something like that. When I really need to focus in and, and study or and do work on my computer, then I like to listen to lo-fi beats. And if I'm sad, well then I just listen to Taylor Swift. I'm just kidding. That's just what I listen to when I want to be sad. Okay, just kidding again, okay? Uh, I, I just don't listen to that. Uh, actually, I like to listen to real moody or dramatic music like NF or Bon Iver. Uh, you probably don't know who that last one is. Th doesn't matter. Maybe you're the same way. Maybe you've got a favorite song that speaks to what you're dealing with, or you've got a song that fits each feeling, and, and one that matches every mood, one that reflects the emotions you might be experiencing. And it's pretty amazing how songs can make us feel happy or mad or sad. And well, that's, that's what this series is really kind of all about. It's about our feelings and our emotions and our moods. Maybe you hear the word emotions and you think, oh yeah, I, I know what emotions are. Happy, mad, sad, or, or maybe you hear the word feelings and you think, oh yeah, we're on the same page. I'm always feeling hungry. All right, and look, the reality is that as middle schoolers, you probably, you, you feel like a million and one different things in a, in a single day. And while hunger is definitely a feeling that many of us can relate to as we're striving for better habits this new year, <laughs> What we're talking about today is a little bit different. We're, we're gonna be talking about the things that you feel in your mind. Uh, now, chances are you might not always know how to talk about what you're feeling. Uh, you know you're feeling something, but you may not be sure exactly what to call it. And maybe that's just because feelings change so fast. Uh, but often, what you're feeling goes beyond the feelings uh, that you have word for, words for. Sometimes you're more than just mad. Sometimes it's your best friend didn't invite you to the party, mad or your brother ate your cheese pizza, mad. Uh, sometimes it's your parents are in a fight again, sad. Or you didn't make the team, sad. Or maybe it's it, you scored the winning goal, happy. Or you finally got your own room, happy. But see, sometimes what we're feeling is so much more than just the words that we have. It's so much deeper than just happy, sad, or mad. It, it's kind of like this. If, if you're a painter or, or you love art class, and you probably know exactly what this is. Uh, this is a painter's palette, and it's a tool that artists use to, to hold all the colors that they need to create whatever masterpiece it is that they're painting. And on it, they usually don't just have the, the primary colors of red, yellow, blue, green. They have so many different combinations and shades of color to paint with. Uh, and honestly, this is a lot like our feelings. Uh, we're all dealing with an entire artist palette of emotions. And initially, we become familiar with the four primary colors uh, of our emotions. We all start with those basic words uh, when we talk about how we feel, happy or mad or sad. But as we mature, as the palette gets bigger, we start to have access to so many different shades and combinations than we had before. And we get all the moods and emotions uh, that maybe we've never experienced or maybe never expressed before. And well, they're in our palette now, and the more feelings that we feel or experience as we mature, the bigger our palette becomes. And suddenly, we're like a professional painter with the feelings we have on our palette. And now, I'm no artist, but I, I can tell you that I've had all sorts of emotions throughout my life. I've used so many of these colors. In fact, I should be an expert painter, emotionally speaking, by this point with all the emotions I've experienced in my life. Uh, so, so what does this have to do with all of our moods? Here, here's what I want everyone to know, is that emotions are a good thing. Uh, even the bad ones. Feeling what we feel is actually a great and healthy thing to do. But at some point, we've probably struggled or, or been told we struggle with managing the many different moods that we have. And, and that looks different for all of us. Maybe you tend to avoid letting your feelings and emotions show because you don't want to seem weak. But here's the thing, having feelings doesn't make you weak, it makes you human. Or maybe you struggle with your moods because it feels like the last forever, like the way you feel now seems like the way that you will always feel. You're sad and you can't figure out how to get out of it, or, or you're happy and you hope it lasts forever. We've all been there and we've all thought that what we feel now is just what we're going to feel forever. 
Or maybe you don't think much about your own feelings, but you see people's worlds revolve around theirs. Your parents, your friends, your coach, uh, your older sibling, your kid, that kid in your small group, or the guy that's losing it in that viral video that everybody is sharing. Everybody around you seems to be obsessed with what they're feeling. And maybe you've said or done something out of the ordinary because of what you were feeling. Maybe it was something you regretted, or maybe, maybe you yelled at your parents when you were angry or threw something at your sibling when you were frustrated or stormed out of the room and slammed the door when you were overwhelmed. Now, typically, the, these aren't the things that you would usually do or say, and that's because like a lot of us, you got caught up reacting to your feelings. We've all done this at some point. We get stuck letting our emotions tell us what to do. In other words, you let your emotions be the boss of you. And honestly, again, we all do this. We all struggle with controlling our feelings instead of letting them control us. After all, it's hard to say no to our feelings when they're so strong. It's hard to take control of our feelings when our feelings seem like they have all the power. See, the problem with this isn't that we have feelings. There's nothing wrong with having a feeling or even developing a mood. The problem starts when we let our feelings become the boss of us when we let our moods tell us what to do. And the thing that I love about Jesus, among many things, is that so much of what he teaches is helpful to everyone. Whether you consider yourself a Jesus follower or not, there's something that you can take from what we're gonna talk about today and in this series. It's something really cool that Jesus said during his time on earth and, and that I think can help all of us. It's something that shows us how to control our moods rather than letting them control us. And here's what I think is cool about this. Not only can we trust what Jesus says about our feelings because he's God and he created them, but because he was human too. When Jesus came to earth, he came as a human. And that means he experienced what we do. He knows what it is to feel all the feelings. So when he talks about emotions, we can trust that he knows what he's talking about. So let's take a look at what Jesus had to say to a group of people about feelings. And then he added, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within you. They are what defile you. Jesus was talking to a crowd of people when he said this, and in that crowd of people were Pharisees and other teachers of the law, and these were people who thought they knew exactly what they had to do to be right with God. They knew the rules, they knew the laws, uh, they, they knew everything that had been passed down uh, to them inside and out. And they, they thought that living by those rules made them good. But Jesus, well, he lived in a way that looked completely different than the Pharisees thought he should. He was less concerned about what people were doing and more concerned about what was going on inside them. He was focused on what was happening in their hearts. And that's why Jesus started here, by pointing out that there's so much more to our actions and words. That, that long list of stuff that, that he talked about, the evil thoughts, pride, foolishness, the deceit, the greed, all those things start from where? Within. They're an overflow of what we feel in our hearts. And when we aren't paying attention, what we feel in our hearts can take over and become the boss of us controlling what we do and say. Because of all that, we need to take our moods more seriously. We have to pay attention to how we feel because how we feel motivates how we act. Our moods come out in our words and actions, in our choices, and so much more. Now, I, I get that this isn't going to be easy. Uh, we're all going to have to identify what we feel, but we also need to pay attention to how it makes us act. Uh, how are we supposed to, to not let our feelings be the boss of us when the feelings are so strong? Uh, now, I think Jesus understood that this was going to be hard, and he knew that whether you're 11 years old or 103 years old, this was going to be a struggle. And that's why I think Jesus also said this. He said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. See, managing our feelings is hard. And Jesus knew that. And that's why he offers to do it with us. When we're feeling something and it's intense, Jesus tells us to come to him. When we're tempted to let our mood ruin someone else's mood, Jesus tells us to come to him. And when we're not even sure if what we're feeling is okay, Jesus tells us to come to him. When we're feeling like our emotions are out of control, difficult to understand, tempting us to act in ways we know might be wrong, or simply making us act in ways that we don't typically act, Jesus tells us to come to him. Maybe you're thinking that this all sounds great, but you're not really sure what coming to Jesus looks like. And while 
going to Jesus may look different to each of us, it does start with recognizing that His Spirit is at work within all of us. And if you haven't given your life to Him through repentance and baptism, making Him the Lord and Savior of your life, then maybe that's your first step. Maybe for you, it's, it's trusting for the first time that Jesus is with you. Maybe for you, it's reading your Bible. Maybe it's praying. It could be talking to Jesus directly the same way that you would to a friend or trusted adult in your life about your feelings. Or, or maybe it's singing or listening to worship songs, like having different playlists of worship songs that, that help you express what you, how you feel. Kind of, kind of like what we talked about in the beginning, about how we tend to listen to different things depending on our mood. Or maybe it's simply remembering that Jesus knows what it's like to feel big feelings and you can be comforted that He's right here with you. And here's what I want you to remember. When you feel like your moods are controlling you, Jesus will give you rest. He'll give you help. He'll give you a break from the weight of your feelings and He'll help lead you in a better way. We can go to Him with anything because what we're feeling is not something that He's scared of. He's not scared of our feelings and He wants us to trust Him through them. He's a better boss than our emotions will ever be. And so often it feels like our feelings are the boss of us. But here's what I want you to know today. Because of Jesus, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. So what does this mean? What exactly does it look like to take a step back from letting our feelings be in control? Uh, what does it look like to not let your emotions be the boss of you? Well, here are a few things that you can do to start. First is, is try to think of the emotions you have the hardest time controlling. Think of the ones that end up motivating you to say or do something that's out of character for you. The ones that end up bossing you around more than you'd like. Maybe it's rage or sadness or frustration or anxiety or fear. Whatever it is for you, start paying attention to it. Remember, we said it's important to pay attention to our feelings. And when we do or say something that isn't the way that we would normally act, stop and think about why. The truth is, it may, it may be difficult to do this in the moment. So it takes practice. And if you've already acted because of your emotions, well, give yourself some time to think about why you said what you did or did what you did. And what were you feeling before you did or said that thing? Pay attention to the moods that you were experiencing just before you acted. And that will help you recognize uh, what's happening and help you to change it the next time you're feeling that way. Number two, talk about your feelings. Uh, for some of us, this comes supernaturally. We, we, we love to talk about our feelings and what's making us feel those things. But for others of us, this isn't very fun or very easy. Uh, for some of us, talking about our feelings feels awful. And I'm not saying that we need to pour our hearts out about our emotions. I'm just saying that we need to identify what we're feeling and to vocalize it. If you're mad, say it. If you're frustrated, say that. If you're depressed, talk about it. Remember, it's not wrong to feel a certain way. Feelings are real, but sometimes by talking about it, we discover there are a few other feelings attached to that feeling, and it helps us find some perspective. Find a safe person, like a, like a parent or a trusted friend or, or your small group leader who you can talk to about your moods. Somebody who will help you identify what you're feeling and how it might be causing you to act. Maybe even talk to Jesus in prayer. He invites us to come to Him again with our feelings. So maybe start there. And third, be kind to yourself. All right, this sounds a little cheesy, but seriously, this is, this is so important. If there's anything that I want you to know today, it's that your feelings aren't bad and feeling them, talking about them or experiencing them isn't bad either. Remember, we said this whole managing our moods thing wasn't going to be easy. So be kind to yourself when you don't always get it right. Don't beat yourself up about how you feel or how you act because of how you feel. Give yourself the chance to do it differently next time. To not let your feelings be the boss of you and don't let them box you into just the way that you are. To take it to Jesus and ask for his help. And remember, emotions don't have to be the boss of you. Now, we know it's easy to talk about this on a stage or from a platform, but when it's in your real life, it's not so easy. I recognize that. Real life is complicated, and so are real feelings. So don't be discouraged. Make sure that you have a Christ-centered community of people around you in your life that you can talk to about stuff like this. So as we wrap up our discussion today, I want you to consider this question. When was a time you remember letting your emotions be the boss of you? Maybe talk with your family about it this morning or reach out to your small group. 
All right, thank you for watching and make sure you tune back in next week as we continue in week two of this series. And, and parents, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our parent email because over the next few weeks, I'm going to share some helpful tips for how you can help protect the emotional health of your kids in some practical ways. So don't go anywhere and our main service will start in just a minute.